I was the fashion commentator first and then the fashion coordinator for the Ebony Fashion Fair, and I was the fashion editor for Ebony Magazine. And I started out with um, the commentary. And I, I asked a friend of mine who worked for the Johnsons if they could get me an interview with the Johnsons because I wanted, I wanted to do the commentary. And I said, uh, so she got this interview for me. So at the same time this interview was going on, they were interviewing some models. So Mr. Johnson said, all right, uh, Audrey, let me hear you talk about the models. I went on to talk about the model. I said, he's got on a double-breasted sequin suit. It has a gilet underneath and vent pockets. It could be bison pockets, and it has a set-in shoulder. And he, I just went on to describe. So he says, that jacket has all of that? You're hired. So that job was fantastic. I got to travel all over the United States on a Greyhound bus. Mm -hmm. I was the eighth seat in the back of the bus on the right-hand side. At least I had two seats. I had a vase that I had taped to the window. I put fresh flowers in almost every other day. I'd set it up like a like it was your home. <laughs> it was your home away from home. It was the Greyhound bus. <sighs> That's right. It was the bus driver. It was, uh, f I think, 15 models, or well, 13 models, I don't remember. Wardrobe, four wardrobe, business manager, uh, stage manager, and we hit it. And clothes, I mean clothes, all on the back of the bus. And we went from city to city. And I tell you, I still have friends in all those cities. Well, it was the most exciting job any young woman could possibly have. Beside doing that, we did that for six months. We did that from September through December. And then Mr. Johnson, or one of the editors there, said, Audrey, you have to become the fashion editor because we need some editorial. So then I became the fashion editor. And then Mr. Johnson said to me, well, Audrey, you're not, you don't have anything to do. You're just commentary, doing commentary three months. And then you're fashion editor. That doesn't take any time. So I want you to sell. Oh, my goodness. So there I was. I was the second woman. Vi Higginson was the first woman. I was the second woman to sell space. But did I learn a lot? See, selling is what the name of the game is. And people don't understand that. You can have the greatest idea if you can't sell it. If you can't market that idea, what good is it? But it was a great experience. I traveled the world. And when I tell you that I went first class TWA with Eunice Johnson, I went to... Paris, Milan, Firenze, Florence, um, all over Italy, Bologna, uh, uh, the south of France, wherever, London, of course, the Dorchester, the Savoy, the Plaza Atene, the Hassler, the Grand Hotel, only the best, top, top, top of the line. That's how Eunice traveled, and I traveled with her. And I got to meet all of the great designers, uh, Yves Saint Laurent, uh, Pierre Cardin, Valentino Garavani, the Princess Irene Galaxine. In fact, she didn't even want me to come to her show. I had to, I had to get to, the, oh yeah, well, we had so many, we were discriminated against, so it was, it was really bad, but I would, honey, I worked my way in those shows. I could work my way. So you know how I worked my way? I, they thought I was a model because in the 70s, models, black models were in. We were in. So, and I was skinny. And whatever those girls were working, honey, I'd just go in, the, go in with the models. That's how I got to, that's how I knew about backstage. I could see the clothes better because they never gave me a front row seat anyway. Maybe, I take that back. You know who would give me a front row seat? Um, Hannah Mori. Well, she was She was Japanese. And I got to meet Emmanuel Ungaro, and I got to know all the black models. So that's how I could get in to these um, places, because the black models said, "Oh, this is Audrey, this is my cousin, my sister, whatever they say." And then I would, uh, I would make certain we got the invitation. Oh yeah, it was not easy. No, they did not want Ebony Magazine. We would say Ebony Magazine, and they said magazen, meaning a store. And then we'd have to say journal. And then I would bring lots of Ebony's in my bag to show them what we did, because they didn't know who we were. So we, I was always promoting Ebony in Europe, so the designers could know when we go to a designer. And we used to buy all the clothes, of course, now. So that started uh, Ebony Magazine 
started the Ebony Fashion Fair in 1958, and it ran for 62 years. And they're going to start it up again, I hope. So it ended uh, last year. It was incredible. I did seven years with them. I did 1970 and 1977, so I did 13 and 19. The 13th annual through the 19th annual Ebony Fashion Fair. Ah, the most fabulous people in the world I met. Every doctor, lawyer, Indian chief, every, anybody, with the ambassadors, you know, undersecretary. Oh, we went to the White House a couple of times. Oh, please. We were the girls at the Ebony Fashion Fair. We met Muhammad Ali. I can't even drop all the names that who we met because we were the Ebony Fashion Fair ladies. What an experience. Best job you could possibly have meet, to meet everybody. And everybody get to remember you. Oh, Audrey, I remember you. Thank you so much. Oh, my mother told me about you. So what a life. 